the Canon M50, it's a great vlogging camera, but is it also a good lightweight landscape photography camera? In this video, I want to answer that. What's it like shooting with it out in the field? And towards the end of the video, we'll have a look at some of the images after I process them and see if I'd be happy with the quality. I bought the Canon M50 about two years ago as a vlogging camera and it's brilliant. My normal landscape photography gear is a big heavy full frame DSLR, I've got big heavy lenses and there are just times when I feel that the weight holds me back from exploring. Not most of the time, but just occasionally I'd like to go on an exploration hike, like you know, maybe up to the top of that mountain up there. But I don't really fancy carrying all that heavy gear up there. But on the other hand, I don't want to get up there, find a fantastic scene and not be able to make an image of it. So a lightweight solution would be a good idea. Now there are a lot of landscape photographers I know of that are using things like the Fuji X-T3 for a lightweight solution. But I don't want to spend a load of money on a new camera and lenses that I might only use you know, one trip out of 10 or 15. I already own the Canon M50. I own three lenses for it, the 11 to 22, the 15 to 45, and the 55 to 200. So that gives me a full frame field of view equivalent of kind of 18 to 320. Okay, a little tiny gap in the middle, but that's a pretty good range. And if I can get decent quality images from that setup, then that's going to be good enough when I want to go on these exploration hikes and I don't want to take my normal landscape photography gear with me. Of course you can put better quality lenses on this little camera. You can buy an adapter and you can put all sorts of lenses on there. But that means spending money and it means adding size and weight to what I'm carrying. And uh, that kind of defeats the object for me. Now I should say I did do a video on this about a year ago but it was more of a me out doing some photography and just happening to be using the Canon M50 rather than a deep dive into how good or not this camera is. And I want to redress that here. I want to make this very focused on what this camera can do and what it's like to use. And I'm also taking this opportunity to try out doing some vlogging on the little GoPro because if I'm going to be using the Canon M50 as my stills camera I might want to be doing my video on something else. I'm going to be using the camera on the tripod, the same as I normally would. I will have image stabilization turned off. Uh, I've got an L bracket on the camera because that's what I like to have on the camera for landscape shoots so that I can easily switch from portrait to landscape format. I'm going to be shooting in manual exposure and I'm going to be using, most of the time, manual focus. So how am I getting on with shooting with the Canon M50? Well, the first thing to say is in terms of weight, bringing a lightweight camera like this, even with some hiking gear with me, means I can use a lighter, smaller, lighter rucksack. And that actually makes a difference, particularly when you're uh, climbing up hills. So if I want to do more exploring when I'm climbing up mountains, it's definitely gonna be a good thing. In terms of composing the image, I tend to use the viewfinder to do the main part of my composition and then just uh, switch over to the live view to check details. Um, I do find the viewfinder on this very small and difficult to see. It's an electronic viewfinder and I don't find it particularly easy to use. The screen, however, is nice and clear and I'm actually finding it reasonably easy to set my compositions up using the screen, although I am still using the viewfinder a little bit. The camera certainly doesn't have the uh, number of, of controls easily available to the fingertips that I'm used to, uh, and I do find it a little bit fiddly having to change the function of the dial if I want to change aperture or switch it so that it's changing the shutter speed instead. But. Uh, it's not a major issue and landscape photography isn't generally something where you're having to do things in a massive hurry. So I can easily get used to that. Also, normally when I'm shooting, I 
when I'm setting the composition up, I have back button focusing set up on my camera. So I can hit the AF on button, get things in focus, broadly speaking, while I'm doing the composition. And then I go in and manually focus afterwards, knowing that I don't have to change anything out. I don't have to switch anything off. If I want to do that on this one, I have to have autofocus turned on, half press the shutter button to get the scene in focus and then switch over to manual. I have to remember to do that if I then want to take full manual control of the focus. Again, it's a minor thing, but uh, something I'll have to get used to. Actually, as an additional note on the uh, autofocus, manual focus thing, I just discovered you can't actually zoom in on the live view to do uh, manual focus unless you're actually in the manual focus mode. So that will stop me from making any mistakes around that, hopefully. I'm also using the two second timer to avoid camera shake when I'm taking the images. And that's exactly what I would normally do on my big DSLR. The only difference is that if I wanted to do a long exposure, say beyond 30 seconds, on my uh, normal camera, I'd plug in a cable release. But unfortunately, there's nowhere on this camera to plug in a cable release. So uh, the only options would be to use either a dedicated Bluetooth release that you can buy or sorry the winds are suddenly got up uh, or if you don't want to do that you can also use the I think it's called the Canon Connect app on the mobile phone which I do have Okay, I've just done a shot of the mountain over there using the telephoto lens to see what it looks like when I do a long focal length shot. And now I'm doing a shot of this tree over here behind me. And the objective of this one, this is a wide angle shot. And what I'm trying to see is how much detail I'm gonna be able to recover in the shadows because the sun is actually behind the tree. So I've got a lot of contrast. And what I want to see is how much highlight and shadow detail I can recover in the final image. Yeah, it's getting a bit windy now. Just come around a the corner there and there was like sand and soil just being blasted across the trail. I feel like I've been shot blasted. Okay, one final image, then I'm going to pack up because the wind is getting a bit silly. Uh, I've got the camera bag hanging off the tripod to try and stabilise things a bit. I've got the 55 to 200 lens on all the way out, 200 mil. And it's kind of one of these shots I've done before where uh, in the background we've just got the mountains with layers of haze where the light's sort of kind of beating down in there. It's a really fast exposure time, 1 800th of a second, I think. And this is going to be my final shot because I think at the minute it's just getting crazy with this wind. I'm in a reasonably sheltered area at the moment and I'm still getting blown around all over the place. But it's getting windy. Not good. Okay, so that wind got a bit crazy. In fact, that final image, the reason I had the bag hanging off the tripod wasn't just to stop it from shaking, it was actually to stop it from blowing over, which as soon as I took the bag off, it almost did. Um, but I'm back home, safe and sound now, in the office, and it's time to have a look at the images that I shot. And I actually took four images. I've quickly processed them, and uh, let's have a look and see what the quality's like. Okay, so this is the first image. It was shot at 11 millimeters on the 11 to 22 lens. So that's uh, about 18 millimeters full frame equivalent. 
f8 1 2 50th of a second and uh, like all of these images none of them are going to win any awards they're just really compositions that I decided to take to just get a feel for what the camera could do uh, second image was shot with the 70 to 200 lens at 70 millimeters so that's I don't know what about 100 and 110 millimeters full frame equivalent f11 1 80th of a second third image which was the tree image uh, which was probably going to be the most challenging for the camera to cope with in terms of light uh, again 11 to 22 lens 11 millimeters so roughly 18 mil equivalent f11 1 3 20th of a second and then the final image uh, which I have converted to black and white because that kind of scene to me calls out for black and white. 200 millimeters, so that's about a 320 millimeter full frame equivalent field of view. I say 100 f8, and that was 1 800th of a second. So, as I said, none of these are going to win any awards necessarily, but uh, they should give me a good idea of what a finished image is going to look like. So just looking at them on screen, they look pretty good, they look nice. But it's when you start to zoom in that we're going to find out if they've really worked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at each image in two different ways. I'm going to zoom in to 100% in Lightroom and check it out. But I've also got the images open in Photoshop. And what I've done is I've resized the image to be the equivalent of an 84 centimeter image along the long edge. That's about 33 inches, so that's the equivalent of uh, about an A1 print size, which is a pretty big print. And then I'm going to view them in uh, at print size, and my system is set up to display that accurately. So across the top here I actually have inches marked out and that is a, a genuine inch on my monitor. So that's not a guaranteed way to ensure that the print quality is going to be good, but I've found in the past it's a pretty good indication. Okay, so let's start off with this first image and let's go into the 100% view in Lightroom. And that detail is pretty good. I mean, this mountain is a fair distance away. You know, we can see the, the trees on here. I mean, it was windy, so you know, a little bit of blur in some of these trees might be uh, might be natural. But the fine detail is fine. Let's have a look at the print view in the print size view in Photoshop and that is also absolutely fine there's no noise in the image there's no chromatic aberration I did check for chromatic aberration before I did any processing uh, and there was no significant problems with that either okay let's have a look at the second image which is this one again not going to win any awards but uh, it's quite a nice image it's quite pretty let's go into the 100% view in Lightroom lots of nice fine detail in there no noise no other problems with it okay into Photoshop and this has already been resized, so let's have a look at it. print size. Yeah. That's nice. Nothing wrong with that at all. Okay, the third image. Now this is the one that's going to be the most challenging because it was such a high contrast scene with the sun coming through here. Uh, and that's the reason why I chose to shoot it. I've boosted the shadows up as much as I think is appropriate for the image without it looking too fake. Probably boosted it a bit more than I really needed to. But if you have a look at the 100% view, there might be a little tiny bit of grain in there. 
where I've boosted the shadows. But then this, the texture of this wood is probably quite grainy anyway. Let's take a look up here. Yeah, there's a bit of grain in around the high contrast areas. But as I said, I've probably boosted the grain, the uh, shadows on this more than I normally would. Let's have a look at it in uh, Photoshop and again in the print size. That's going to make a perfectly usable print. I suspect what I would probably do on this one, reprocessing it, is I would bring it back a little bit on the shadows. It's a little bit too bright, to be honest, and that would probably remove some of that noise. And then the final image, and this is one that doesn't have a lot of fine detail. It was looking way out into the distance with the haze. So, uh, but nevertheless, let's have a look. 100% view in Lightroom and it, yeah it's, there's a lot of haze in there but you know the detail on the edges of the mountains has come out you know pretty well considering those mountains are a considerable distance away nothing wrong with that and in Photoshop again we'll go into the print size view And that looks like it would make a perfectly good print. Okay, let's answer the question then. The Canon M50 is a landscape photography camera. Let's look at the things that I wasn't so keen on. This viewfinder is very small. Uh, I wear glasses and I found it rather difficult to look through this viewfinder to compose images, which meant I relied on the screen a lot. Um, and I do like to use the viewfinder, but I think I can work around that. There's also a lack of um, sort of dedicated controls. You do have to go in and use the uh, the menu system on the screen to change the function, for example, of this wheel. But again, it's not something that's going to stop me from getting an image. Uh, the L bracket that I was using on this did restrict the position I could get this flip screen into uh, and if I decide to buy a different L bracket I might be able to get one that will you know, enable me to use it to more effectively compose images. What do I like about it? Well, you know, it's lightweight so for hiking up mountains it's brilliant. Um, and the image quality, as we just looked at, it looks pretty good to me. Some of the really high contrast stuff might be a bit more of a challenge. Could probably get around that with doing some exposure merging. Uh, and I was tempted to try to do that on that tree image. But with the way the wind was blowing, everything was moving around, it would have been an absolute nightmare. I don't think it would have been possible to exposure merge it. So, uh, yeah. I think the Canon M50 and the, the, the lenses that I've got, although I didn't test out the 15 to 45, but I think that makes a really good, lightweight, hiking landscape photography solution. And that's what I'm going to be using it for in the future on those exploration hikes that I want to do. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have and you're not already a subscriber, please consider hitting subscribe. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. If you have enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the thumbs up button, give it a like, sharing it on social media, and leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Are you using the Canon M50 as a stills or landscape photography camera? What do you think of it? And finally, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch. So thank you very much. And until the next video, bye.